Like, I don't want to be too mean here, but if Reforge Gaming is Jimmy Neutron, then Harmon Smith is definitely the guy from uh, Megamind. Like, then the villain. Like, not only do they look alike, they also sound the same. It has 500,000 concurrent players on Steam. There is no Easter Bunny, there is no Tooth Fairy, and there is no Queen of England. I don't know, maybe it's just me who hears that. Maybe, maybe, it could very well just be only me who, <laughs> who hears the similarity. Anyway, yes. In case you're wondering, this is in fact the third video in a row on my channel about Pound World. But this is the thing, right? Everybody is either just completely normal and fine with the game and they're playing it or whatever, or you fucking hate it, you despise the game for no reason other than it's similar to Pokemon and it's not on my console. Perfectly normal reasons to hate a video game. And honestly, it, it surprises me that it took Harmon Smith certified glue sniffer and Nintendo fanboy this long to make a video about Power World complaining about it. And honestly, it's the most brain-rotting video I've seen about Power World yet. Without wasting any more time, let's just get right into that video. So last night I did a warning stream talking about Power World, the, the game that indie uh, the indie YouTube scene is pretending is like gonna be the Pokemon killer, it's gonna be some big thing. It has 500,000 concurrent players on Steam, it's sold over a million copies, it's over for the Pokemon company! Harmon Smith does not disappoint, ladies and gentlemen. Already there's so much to unpack in this tiny, short little clip here. First off, no one expects this to be a Pokemon killer. Pokemon is one of the biggest entertainment franchises on the planet. Obviously, Power World is not going to destroy the franchise. And yes, it is a big game. I don't know. You're pretending like 500,000 con concurrent players is not a lot of people. But it's not even that. It's over a million concurrent players. This is the second biggest launch in Steam history. And it's recently dethroned CSGO in current uh, highest player count. And it didn't sell over a million copies, Harmon. It sold over 7 million copies in like less than a week. This this game is really, really big. It's over for Nintendo, right? I I talked about what people were going to do. And uh, yeah, I was right. Like all day long, we were bombarded with ridiculous notions that like, oh, this game is a masterpiece. Oh, look at me play this game. Oh, look at how great it is. And now, now that the hype uh, session is over, much like Temtem before it, the game is completely forgotten. It is dwindling in popularity. Uh, no, it's it's not falling off or dwindling in popularity. I don't know where you got that. I, I do know where you got that. You're making it up in order to cope with the reality that is the fact that I just took a screenshot and the game has 1.1 million concurrent players. Uh, 2 million it's all, was its all-time peak, which was yesterday, so it's definitely not dwindling in popularity. Now, this game could be like Temtem, right? Temtem was also a Pokemon-like game that released, was massive at launch, and then quickly dwindled into irrelevancy. But there are various reasons why Temtem failed, and there are various reasons why Power World might not fail. Just because it's a very similar situation where a monster-catching game comes out and is very popular at launch, it doesn't mean immediately that it's just going to fall off and die like Temtem did. <laughs> That's just ignoring the reasons why Temtem fell off. It fell off because there wasn't immediate support after launch and the game kind of just stayed the same and nothing really changed, right? They didn't add all the content that they were promising to add until very, very late. And that's the main problem with that game. If Power World can just keep updating the game consistently, Right, and make the game better consistently, people will keep playing the game. More and more people are starting to notice, like, what's going on, the game is being shilled, you know, YouTubers aren't exactly the, the biggest advocates for game quality anyway, right? They just jump on the trends, right? So with that in mind, with what's, with what's been going on, like, what can we learn from this, right? What can we learn from this experience? Well, first of all, it doesn't seem to be possible to use the same type, kind of techniques to prop up a game like this that the industry uses for Baldur's Gate 3 or whatever. Yeah, I'm kind of lost. I don't really know what's going on, what he's complaining about now. <laughs> I know he hates Baldur's Gate 3, I know that. He, he thinks Baldur's Gate 3 has been like propped up by people, by PC gamers, I guess. And it's not actually popular or even a good game or successful. It's just been made to look like that 
because people on PC are salty, they don't have a switch. I don't fuck, I don't get it, okay? The mental gymnastics this guy does to cope with the fact that like other people enjoy games that aren't made by Nintendo is I insane. Right, because Overwatch had like a similar kind of like thing where people came out and they tried screaming about, oh man, there are no colorful online shooters in this market. Overwatch is completely unique in this regard. And then meanwhile, like Splatoon came out last year, was better, was better put together, like remained relevant longer, right? Was more unique and creative and had more interesting characters. Oh, okay, <laughs> what? Like, no, Overwatch didn't get popular because it was the first colorful shooter or whatever the fuck. No one thought that. And Splatoon wasn't the first colorful shooter either. And the games aren't even directly competing. I don't think anybody would think to themselves, Oh, what am I gonna play? Am I gonna buy Splatoon or buy Overwatch? Like, they, they don't overlap. They're completely, like, they're shooters. Yes, they're multiplayer shooters, but they're completely different in the audiences that play them. And Splatoon doesn't have better characters, okay? I I'd agree with you that Splatoon has been relevant longer, because Overwatch fucking fell off after the first game. And because of shit decisions made by the devs, but the characters in Overwatch are definitely better because it actually has characters. Uh, <laughs> Unless you want to tell me that the fucking like captain guy, I don't even know his name from Splatoon, is like better than every single Overwatch. Right. Splatoon stopped Overwatch in every single way, shape, and form. But for the first ten years, almost, yeah, about half that long, about five years. For the first several years, people were saying the exact opposite. Until Overwatch completely fell off a cliff, people were saying Overwatch was this big phenomenon. You know, 40 million players online at once or something like that. It's one of the most popular things ever. But it was though, it was one of the biggest games ever, <laughs> right? Especially when it first came out. I know later on they kind of fucked it up with like unbalancing the game and shitty updates and stuff like that. But the game was one of the most popular games ever, even nowadays, right? Overwatch 2 isn't very good. But I can still play it and really enjoy the game. That, that's what I did when it first came out. I'm sure it wouldn't be any different if I started playing right now. And Splatoon didn't completely pounce on Overwatch when Overwatch first came out. Overwatch had more players, sold more copies, was more relevant. I don't... He seems to have this thing in his head that Nintendo must be on top always. So he's just gonna lie and make up shit that makes it seem like Nintendo games are more relevant or have been more relevant than like some of the biggest games to ever stay people will try to do this thing that like oh uh, uh blizzard made all these mistakes like overwatch was popular at one point blah, 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 blah. but no, no 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 what actually happened is that you latched onto a trend and began supporting that trend you began feeding into the beast you you were using you were part of the process of pretending this game was some game of the year contender, right? When in reality, it wasn't really relevant in any way, shape, or form. See, that's exactly what I mean. He creates his own reality where Overwatch was never relevant. Overwatch was like the biggest game, the biggest first person shooter for like two, two and a half years straight, I think. And even one game of the year, which doesn't really mean shit, but it does show how popular the game was. He, again, like I said, even now, there are enough people playing Overwatch 2 that you can go download the game, play a full match, and have fun. Because the game, despite the fact that it's nowhere near as, I guess, balanced or good as I think it was when it came out, is still incredibly fun to play. But I'm gonna skip ahead to a part of the video where he is going to talk about Pell World again, because after this he goes on a rant of, of... Like, I'm not kidding, after this he goes on a rant about how World of Warcraft was never relevant, which is the dumbest shit ever. Like, he also claims that was just a trend that fell off. Like, dude, are you mentally, mentally crippled, this man? Why these games are forgotten so quickly, right? Like, Elden Ring, Baldur's Gate 3. Like, long term, these games are not gonna be relevant. You know, Elden Ring is already trailing behind Dark Souls in uh, best game, best games ever made polls, right? Uh, Elden Ring is never going to be more popular than, than Dark Souls. Just like Dark Souls is never going to be more popular than Skyrim. And just like how Skyrim is never going to be more popular than Zelda. This, ladies and gentlemen, is mental illness. Like, there is really nothing you can do, right, about, to establish, uh, to, down, uh, to demolish these established Nintendo properties, right? 
it, by saying that like a uh, Pal World is going to like beat Pokemon, you would have to have like you would have to have a TCG, you would have to have a merchandise line, you would have to have you know an anime adaption, you would have to have like all of this stuff, right? All of these highly successful lucrative products. Okay, so first of all, I think it's very fucking weird and delusional to say that you can't destroy these established Nintendo properties, even though the games you're dunking on, like yeah, Power World's new game, but Baldur's Gate or The Elder Scrolls are game franchises that are just as old, if not older, than most Nintendo properties. Like, obviously not older than Mario and Zelda, but older than most. And yeah, Pokemon can't destroy Pal World. It would be incredibly delusional if people were to actually think that Pal World is going to destroy one of the biggest entertainment franchises on the planet. However, the huge success that Pal World and other Pokemon or monster catching games have seen in recent years is mainly because people want a good Pokemon game and Game Freak and Nintendo are just not giving them one. Like, I am a huge Pokemon fan, have been since I was 5 years old, right? Played most of the major releases and the last couple of ones I've just literally not enjoyed at all. They were just bad. They sucked. And it's not even because I've grown out of the franchise because I still enjoy the older games. And that's also not because of nostalgia because I played Black and White 2 after playing Sword and Shield, and Black and White 2 is miles better. So no, obviously Pal World is not going to dethrone Pokemon as like the most popular uh, monster catching game. But it does show, and other games like it, the success of other games like Temtem, we already mentioned Koromon, the success of games like this, or Pokemon fan games even, is simply because Nintendo and Game Freak have stopped creating good, or even functional, Pokemon games. Like, years ago, the anime was in trouble. But then, like, the games picked up the slack now, and now with, like, the games kind of being attacked by these, uh, these pretendos, like, the anime is kind of stepping up. You know, the TCG is stepping up. You know, like, the mobile apps are stepping up. Like, there is no way in the world that Pal World, like, a glitchy, uninspired, you know, straight-up plagiarized mess is ever going to topple Pokemon. Power World is not a copy of Pokemon, the gameplay and gameplay loop are completely different, like I've said multiple times, you would notice if you, you know, actually did any research or even looked at two minutes of gameplay. And Power World is not a glitchy mess, I haven't encountered any bugs, unlike Pokemon, because the last, I don't even have to explain this, the last Pokemon game was so technically shit and filled with bugs that everybody on the internet was talking about how bad the game was when it first came out. And that was obvious to me from the beginning, before I even looked at what the game was and what it was like. And before I started realizing that, like, wow, these are just Pokemon designs with, like, different typings and different colors, right? <laughs> like, like, before I realized how, like, blatant it was, right, like, I was saying that. So before he even knew anything about the game, saw any gameplay or anything, right, he already knew this game was a glitchy... Pokemon clone, which it's it shows off perfectly the mental illness that it is being a console fanboy, in this case a Nintendo fanboy. Before he even knows anything about the game, seen anything from the game, he's already accusing it of being an inferior Pokemon clone and just writes it off as not being relevant and shit. That like this is another Temtem, this is another Yokai watch, this is another Digimon. You know, a flash in the pan thing that's relevant because, like, people desperately need Pokemon to go away so they can start claiming that Nintendo is doomed, but, like, it just isn't happening. Like, Pokemon, it, it, it's interesting because it's not just the fact that it's so entrenched and so popular. Like, Pokemon is completely dominant in its niche, right? In a lot of ways, like, I, I said this on my stream, like, I don't think you're ever going to topple Pokemon by doing the same thing as it is. Yes, but none of those games you mentioned, literally none of them are doing the exact same thing that Pokemon does, except for maybe Temtem, which is the closest one out of them to Pokemon, but still very different in its gameplay. None of these games are copying Pokemon gameplay-wise or gameplay loop-wise. So that argument fails. None of the games you just mentioned copy Pokemon's gameplay in any way, shape, or form. The reason that they're so popular right, or get so popular, is because Pokemon is failing and people want to play other mon monster catching games that do innovate their gameplay. I think the rest of the industry is gonna ever 
be able to catch up by Pokemon by putting out a clone of it. Like, it isn't gonna work. Pokemon innovates too much. Pokemon stopped innovating after like Gen 5, and even before that they were barely innovating game after game. And what's the innovation now then, huh? After Gen 5 I guess they added Mega Evolution, and then every other game after that got a shitty gimmick that was basically Mega Evolution, but not as cool. That's the only innovating they've done. They're glitch free. They're glitch free. They're glitch free. <laughs> they do come they introduce new pokemon every generation like there fundamentally is no real demand for a pokemon clone there is a huge demand for quote-unquote pokemon clones and i'm not even talking about power world because power world is not a pokemon clone it's just a monster collecting game that falls in the same genre or niche i guess as pokemon i'm talking about like nexamon or kuramon games that fundamentally copy the idea behind pokemon right collecting monsters in order to battle and make your way through a top-down jrpg these games exist simply because people want to play good pokemon games and game freak isn't making any these are actual pokemon clones and they do really really well because people want good pokemon games same shit goes for like fan games of pokemon like pokemon uranium which are incredibly popular because get this they're actually good and not shit wow you know dragon quest monsters was considered a huge success when it sold a million units Meanwhile, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is selling like what? Like 25 million? 25 million, but I just heard earlier that Overwatch was a massive failure and irrelevant when it sold 40 million. So, right? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm gonna end the video here. This is the dumbest shit ever. Harmon Smith genuinely actually hurts my brain when I watch his videos. So yeah, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.